Time now for French Connections, our weekly look at the intricacies of life here in France. And Florence Villeneuve joins me for that. Hi, Charlie. Hi there. Uh, this week we're going to focus on French politics and the private lives of politicians. Always a thorny topic, but it's one that came back recently um, because a candidate who was running in the Paris mayoral race dropped out following the release of a sex tape. That's right. And it wasn't just any candidate. It was Benjamin Griveaux, so a close ally of the President Emmanuel Macron, and he was representing the ruling La République En Marche in this race for this prized seat for the mayor of Paris. And he pulled out following an online leak of sexual images he allegedly sent to a woman who was not his wife. Now, keep in mind, two consenting adults here, so nothing illegal. But what was illegal was the leak, which was claimed by a Russian performance artist who said he essentially did it to expose Griveaux's hypocrisy. Now, in a televised statement, Griveaux lashed out against what he called vile attacks on his private life. Person. Nobody should experience such violence. A new threshold has been passed. When there are no longer any rules, it's gone too far. Now, France has a reputation for sort of shrugging off the private lives and extramarital affairs of its politicians. So this resignation was quite, or stepping down, was quite unusual. Absolutely. France has traditionally taken pride in being somewhat of an exception in this respect. You know, we know that politicians are human. We know that they're not saints, and we don't expect them to be so long as they're not doing anything illegal. Now, this opinion was particularly loud in the political world, and from the hard left to the hard life, uh, to the hard right, rather, there was immediate outrage, not at Griveaux's behavior, but at this breach of privacy, this voyeuristic sexual inquisition. Even Griveaux's political rivals, rivals in the mayoral race warned that this was dangerous for French democracy, and of course, his allies agreed with this as well. I call on people to respect people's private lives. It's not worthy of the democratic debate we could be having. Politics should not be that. Politics is not that. We have a collective responsibility to say, not here, not in France. Now, interestingly, public opinion is a little bit more divided on this issue, perhaps proof that, well, culture is changing a little bit in France. When you enter politics, you become a public figure. But you should still have a right to a private life. Who can be the judge of appropriate behavior? Can you really be credible after a story like that? Will people really listen to you? I think he did the right thing. Politicians need to set an example. That doesn't mean not having a private life, but it means being careful about what you do. So France, no stranger to political sex scandals. However, there was a little bit of soul-searching after the Dominique Strauss-Kahn incident. That was uh, when he was accused of sexually assaulting a maid in New York City. But other than that, it's really just been kind of gossip and no real consequences for politicians. I mean, just look at French presidents. There have been a lot of scandals within the French president. So back in 1899, President Félix Faure apparently died in the arms of his mistress at the Élysée Palace. Now, more recently, uh, President François Mitterrand, uh, he came under, well, a lot of gossip around his second family. He had a totally second family, but what was scandalous wasn't the fact that he had a parallel life, but that the French public was footing the bill of his of his parallel family. Now, things started to change a little bit with Nicolas Sarkozy, his divorce, his courtship, and ultimately his marriage with top model Carla Bruni was the subject of glossy magazines. And same thing with his successor, François Hollande. His affair with a, a French actress certainly got a lot of press. But what's different about this episode is it's the first time that such a high-profile politician has quit, quit quickly and dramatically because of something he did in in his private life that wasn't illegal. Some say that times certainly have changed. 
Back in the day, we said journalism stops at the bedroom door. These days, we're under the sheets. I'm not sure things have evolved the right way. So some people looking to the U.S., in fact, with this case and drawing some parallels uh, with the 2011 Anthony Weiner sexting scandal. Absolutely. Some have gone so far as to see behind this use of sex to shame politicians, the what they're calling the Americanization of French politics. In fact, it's a word you hear so much these days that it's our word du jour. It's actually very similar to the English word. It's Americanization. And France has been terrified about some sort of Americanization of French culture since Charles de Gaulle. It's really been a buzzword in the wake of the Griveaux scandal. Uh, Some see it as some sort of encroachment of Anglo-Saxon moralizing puritanism. Now, why is this happening today in France? Well, some people are pointing the finger at social media. Social media can really turn around on the politician using it. Certain protective barriers have been breached. Now, they're falling apart, and this can have serious consequences for France's political sphere and economy. This Griveaux scandal, of course, not happening in a vacuum. There is a bigger cultural shift with women and the Me Too movement here in France as well. Indeed, and it's interesting because in the immediate aftermath of the Me Too movement in 2017, it seems like there was a limited impact here in France. But recently, there have been a lot of revelations of sexual harassment and gender discrimination in the cinema world, in the professional ice skating world, in the intellectual world. And perhaps this could, in part, explain Griveaux's decision to quit quickly, although some say that it's because he was actually lagging in the polls and really didn't have a chance to win the race, and so he wanted to avoid a double humiliation. Now, could this mean that France has suddenly become morally conservative? Well, not quite yet, because remember, people aren't necessarily necessarily judging Griveaux on moral grounds, but more because he kind of acted like a careless teenager and he got caught. What bothers people the most is that we're making such a big deal about this. Florence Filmino, thanks so much for breaking that down for us. And that's all we have time for on this edition of French Connections. But in the meantime, you can tweet your questions or story ideas to at Flo Vilmino on Twitter. And be sure to check out our website, France24.com.